What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie and today I want to do a quick video showing you guys a Debian based distribution called Netrunner. So as I stated in the intro of the video, I want to show you guys a distribution and it's Debian based. It's called Netrunner. And I want to go down and show you guys this. I've seen a couple of articles written about this distribution and I thought it would be a good distribution to review just to show you guys, uh, just so you guys can see and try it out for yourself. So let's go down and go to the website and I'll show you guys what it's all about okay cool so i'm at digital watch and right now uh netrunner is listed as number 74 on the list now let's read through and just show you guys what it's all about it says os type linux uh based on debian stable uh the origin is germany so i thought that was super cool and then the architecture you know a orange 64 uh orm and the x86 64 version um desktop it uses kde plasma which i thought was super cool because i don't typically look at many distributions that use the kde desktop so that was another reason why i decided to go on and review this for you guys and then it says the category is beginners uh you know desktop live media and then it's an active project that's what the status means and then like i stated earlier 74 on the popularity list of the top 100 distributions on distro watch and just to read a little bit about it it says netrunner is a debian based distribution featuring a highly customized kde desktop with extra applications multimedia codecs flash and java plugins and unique look and feel the modifications are designed to enhance the user friendliness of the desktop environment while still preserving the freedom to tweak a separate rolling edition based on manjaro linux was released 2000 14 was discontinued relaunched in 2017 and discontinued again in 2019 and then the website for netrunner is netrunner.com so that's where we're going to go to next i already have it open but here's the main website for it this is where you can get the actual iso so you can go on and install it says welcome to netrunner kde plasma on debian stable and if we go right here under let's say intro we can get a little bit of information about it says uh, Linux feature KDE Plasma Netrunner is a complete Linux operating system for PC, laptop, notebooks, and or microcomputers that makes exclusive use of the KDE Plasma desktop environment. And then they have two different versions that you could download. They have a desktop edition or a desktop version. It says the standard version ships with a full set of pre-installed software for everyday usage and the core version which is a slim down version allows you to build up your own system and run it on low spec uh, hardware like ORM boards. So that's super cool. And then it says plasma fine tuning, you know, Netgunner, Netrunner is actively sponsoring development of plasma and other KDE components, which then are included in Netrunner early on. So that's cool. It gets updates from KDE plasma kind of quicker than other distributions that are out there now let's scroll down I'm, i just wanted to show you guys the specs uh and i believe it's at the bottom yeah here's the minimum uh system requirements or the specs that you know needs to be for your system uh so cpu 1.6 gigahertz intel atom that's the minimum processor minimum amount of ram is one gig or drive size you need about 15 gigabytes of memory uh, graphics core Intel GMA 945 and video memory 128 megabytes and then when I saw what a, another thing I saw since I'm using VirtualBox to do the install it says if you want to try Netrunner in VirtualBox make sure you allocate at least 1.5 gigabytes of memory so that gives you a little information about it um, and then let me show you guys where to download it from you basically go to the download button they have the download download arm so i'm gonna click download just to show you guys uh so netrunner 21.01 uh xoxo is the code name they have a direct link they have a torrent link uh and the base 
like I stated, is Debian stable, uh, 10.7 Buster and Plasma 5.14.5. And this is the size of the ISO, the main ISO. This is the full version. Uh, it's 2.6 gigabit, gigabits in size. And then they also let you know the passwords in case the system locks on you. Uh, it's live, live for the password for it. And this is the SHA-256, so you can verify you're downloading the right ISO. And this is the core version, is 1.2 gigabytes. So I just wanted to show you guys the difference between the size of both of those. I already have it downloaded. So let's go on and uh, get to the install right fast. Okay, cool. So I already have the system booted up. I basically gave the virtual machine uh, eight gigabits of memory, which that's what I typically do. I really, I know I don't need to put that much memory on the virtual machine. It doesn't matter. And I gave it a hard drive of about 15 gigabytes. I just used the minimum there. So let me show you guys the installer. So basically all you have to do once you boot it up, uh, just double click on the script that's on here and it'll open up the Calamaris installer. Uh, and as you can see, it already has the language selected, which is English. Uh, well, I'm American English, so I select American English. It's already selected. So let's go down and hit next. And then right here, it automatically shows you US. So I'm gonna go down and uh, select uh, Los, Los, Los Angeles, cause I'm in Pacific standard time. Uh, and let's go down and hit next there. And then it already selects the default keyboard, which is English us. Uh, so it's good to go there. And then what I want to do is go down and erase the disc, which is fine. That's the default. Uh, and actually I gave it 30 gigabits of, me of how hard drive space so that's fine it doesn't matter it's set to dynamic so it will grow as needed uh so let's go down and uh hit next here but here it actually where you want to put the bootloader uh which we want to put it on the main drive i'm gonna just install it on the main hard drive everything on the hard drive i'm not going to separate the home directory or anything like that so let's go down here next here now the next thing it actually for your name so i'm gonna just type in uh josh and then that's the login name and then i'll just leave it as uh, josh dash pc and go down and type in a password so let's go down and type in a super strong password and i never select the login automatically without asking for a password that's just out of habit that's something that i always do on all my systems uh, so let's hit next this is the summary and then we can go down and hit install and then it'll go through the installation and i'll wait and i'll skip ahead until this finishes okay cool so we are done with the install so let's go down and restart this system uh, and remove the live iso right fast so i'll be right back with the system back up okay cool so i rebooted the system and one thing i did was i logged into it and i actually updated the system they had like 28 updates uh within the system and that's the first thing you want to do when you install a new distribution is update the system uh but just to show you guys that if you need to uh just run sudo apps updates uh, since it's Debian based, it uses the apt package manager, so manager and all you have to do is uh, type that in and type in your password since you're running things as sudo. Uh, it'll go through and check the repositories just to make sure it has all the updated packages. If they need some updates, then it'll show up in here and you can just type uh, sudo app upgrade and that will upgrade all the packages on the system. And so let's wait for this to finish right fast and I'll close it up right fast. Uh, and one thing about this distribution I thought was super cool. This is like one of the best looking kde desktop environments that i ever used and i haven't used many of them you guys know that i'm an xfce fan so i typically use xfce when i do my distro reviews but i just wanted to check this one out this is the flagship desktop environment of kde for this distribution so that's why you know i had to use kde kde for this desktop environment but let's go through and show you guys this right fast so first thing on the right hand side this is the panel it looks like the panel settings 
and i'm not great with xfce so don't fault me if i misspeak on certain things but this is how you edit the actual uh panel down here so as you can see things are starting to pop up like as far as where you could change things you know move things around you know move all the icons around and all that stuff so that's how you change those options you can also adjust the height you know and all that good stuff so let's close that and then right here is the <clears throat> the system alerts so this is where alerts will pop up well hold on this looks like history so history yeah this is your alerts so and right now it's showing all the history this is it was a pop-up that happened a few minutes ago about the wired connection meaning that it was connected to the internet now uh so that's the alerts right there <clears throat> The next thing right here is the calendar. That's a super cool calendar. I like the way that looks. Uh, and I'm not sure if this is default for KDE, but I know that's super cool uh, with the time and the clock, you know, like that, the way it looks, you know, I like the way it looks. So this up arrow, this actually kind of shows you all the other options that are not being shown here. So you have uh, battery brightness, uh, keyboard indicator, you know, disc quota, uh, device notifier clipboard so all those options are hidden under there um, if you press the up arrow so it doesn't you know show them all the way across the the taskbar but then this is the network settings then you have your volume settings you know you can go in here out of modify that and this right here I believe is a screenshot tool uh, yeah and a spectacle okay cool so all you have to do is click it and that'll go down and take a screenshot and then you can or it'll bring up the application and then you can hit uh takes new screenshot and then you can save it you know save it in a different format if you need to under export uh you can copy to a clipboard you know all that good stuff pretty much everything you can do with any screen shot program so let's go down and close that and then right here i thought this was super cool this is my first time seeing it and like i said i'm not a kde user uh and maybe this is default in other kde desktops or different versions but it brings up a terminal and it's a kind of like a quick terminal uh, because you're not actually opening it up because uh, one thing is it's like always open it's like a background terminal so to speak uh, so when you click this you can actually run applications uh, like for instance you can update the system like what I just did and actually I just pressed the up arrow that way we can uh, you know see it run and it takes a while or whatever I know the update thing takes a while but you can just click this and close it you know what I'm saying and it's it'll it'll open up wherever you stop that so it stays open so let's say if you have H top on here I'm not sure it should have H top okay so it doesn't have H top let's go down and install H top right fast uh, sudo apt install H top and press enter let's go on and install this and then once this finished installing we'll go down and open up H top uh, and you'll see that it stays open you know up there in this terminal which i thought was super cool so let's type uh h top and i should just ran top you know but h top i just wanted to open that up but as you can see it'll stay open uh you know as you close it it'll stay open running in the background so that's super cool i thought that was super cool to actually see never actually seen one of these before uh because that's not on xfce and i typed the exit but it's still open you know what i'm saying and I guess it refreshes the shell uh, because you don't see any of the other commands that you have open. It'll kind of clear it. Uh, so that's there right there. And then this is the bar where all your applications will be shown as you open them. So like if you open up the system, this is the system information. So as you can see, this is the information for the system. And this will give us a breakdown of what every everything that's on here. So as you can see, KDE Plasma version is 5.1.4 or 14.5. Uh, KDE app version is 18.08.0. Uh, framework version is 5.54. And one thing I wanted to show you guys was the... And then also the QT version is 5.11.3. So... And then it gives you a little bit more information, some hardware information. That's all based on the virtual machine. That's what I gave it. Uh, the graphics and then the OS right here. 
and this is the build version and then down here is the kernel version so it uses kernel 5.10.0-0 and let's go down and uh close this out boom and then the default browser for this distribution is firefox um and they may have another one installed on here i'm not 100 percent sure but let's go down and open up firefox right fast so you guys can actually see what version of firefox is on the actual system or what it comes with default and you guys know firefox takes a while to open up or any browser takes a while to open up when you first you know starting it uh but let's go to help and then i believe under about firefox that'll give us the version and yes that's it firefox browser oh yeah and this is the extended support release and it's 78.8 so that's the version right there good to go and just go down and close this out right fast but firefox is your default browser and then let's go down and open up the file explorer and this should be dolphin yeah it's dolphin so it's super cool uh i'm not sure if this is the way it shows in a normal or any other uh distribution but let's go down type in or go to open uh just to see I wanted to see what version, but I guess it doesn't show, uh, which is kind, of, which is cool. Uh, this is Dolphin, though. It looks, you know, super cool the way they actually, you know, show the icons and all that stuff, as well as the the information based on what's selected at the time. So, document selected, downloads. You know, it changes over here to show you what's in it. It gives you the size and all that good stuff. So, let's go down and close this. But that's super cool. You know and then let's hit the start uh button and this right here i do not like i do not like the way this looks um and this is this reminds me of gnome i do not like the way gnome looks is where where it opens up the whole app app thing across the whole screen uh and and it actually what it actually reminds me of is uh what is that windows 8 uh when windows 8 first came out and it came out with that start menu that opened up and it was hard to figure out how to get back to the desktop that's what it reminds me of so i really do not like that so i went and looked up how to actually change it so i'm gonna hit start i'm gonna go back here but if you right click and i'm sorry if you right click and go to alternatives uh you can actually change it the menu to where it looks like a launcher or Let's just click the first one, application launcher, application menu. Now let's let's do the application menu. So let's switch it to that. Boom. So that should be changed up now. If we hit start, that's the way I'm typically look at uh, used to looking at the start menu. So I'm glad they have that alternative, and I don't mind telling you guys I had to actually look this up. Uh, I don't use KDE that often to know where everything is so i had to actually look that up and that's and i, I always i want to point that out so people would know that i don't know everything about linux you know what i'm saying or different desktop environments and all that stuff so just like i looked it up though there's plenty of information out there on how to actually change things or figure out how to change things in the distribution um based on your liking or whatever so Let's go on and uh, go through this right fast. So as you can see, it shows the recent applications right here. So the last thing we opened up was Firefox. But let's go through each one of these uh, columns right here. So we got games. Uh, they got a couple games in here. I won't go through them all, but that's cool that they have Steam in here. Uh, and then under graphics, one thing I really like, they have GIMP in here. Uh, which is the GNU image manipulation program that's a great application for editing photos just like if you were using adobe photoshop in my opinion so and then also it has inkscape uh krista i've heard of krista i think i talked about it uh and gwen view that's picture in picture viewer from what i've seen uh, and if we go under internet, they have Firefox, like we just opened up, uh, KDE Marble, uh, Pigeon, uh, which is an internet messaging application. And I'll show you guys that. I meant to do a video on that. I've been meaning to do a video on Pigeon, but Pigeon is a great instant messaging program uh, that you can use 
on your desktop and it's it's super cool you can even set up accounts over tour using pigeon uh and i've done that in the past a long time ago just playing around on the dark net or whatever or connecting to tour and then running a messaging application through pigeon so super dope application i might do a video on it pretty soon so you guys can check it out for yourself but uh transmission so that's a bit to income uh client and one thing that was interesting that i saw was skype is installed on here uh so that's that's different you know i didn't expect to see skype on this system so but that's super cool uh but thunderbird my favorite mail client so uh, i'm glad to see that on here as well but if we go to multimedia they have our our dashes and i don't know much about that application but i do know cheese i've used cheese and it. it's for your webcam you could play around with your webcam and then g music browser handbrake which is super cool handbrake is on here so if you're doing some video editing handbrake is super cool for compressing video so if you guys don't know nothing about handbrake check it out for yourself and super cool kaden live is on here and i expected this to be on here because kaden live is a kde application is developed by the kde team so uh that's on here as well and then we got pulse audio uh sm player and your rock and i don't know what that application is now we have LibreOffice on here so that's super cool uh and let's see what version of LibreOffice we have on here right fast that way we can see you know the version uh so let's go to about libre we got 6.1.5.2 so that's a good version of libre so good to go but it has the whole suite so check that out you know what i'm saying it has everything so base uh calc draw impress uh math and writer and then let's go under settings so we have app in image launcher uh and then we got grub customizer uh k vanna manager system settings and x11 vnc server so they have that on here as well uh so under system you know you got information uh, you got your discovery you got dolphin you got htop which i just installed htop uh info center kde partition manager console so that's your terminal right there k sys guard uh they have a wallet manager so you can manage your crypto wallets uh you got network devices or network drives synaptic package manager update manager and you got cook and you got cookie which i don't know much about that one as well that it looks like a terminal application so let's go into utilities though but utilities um you have app image launcher setting you got orc for archive that's your archive manager you got kate uh k calc ocular uh spectacle which we opened up earlier that's the screenshot tool uh suzy studio image writer so that's super cool. You can write your images or create images um, or write images. And you got Voku screen. And then under web, we got uh, HookTube, uh, OpenDesk.org, Skype web, Telegram, and WhatsApp. So you have those applications on here as well. And then here is the power setting. So under power session, you know, you can lock, log out, switch users, suspend, hibernate, reboot, and shut down. And then you also have some of those buttons right over here, too. You have your power off button. Uh, this looks like restarts and lock, I believe. Not 100% sure. Let me, let me hover over them just to see. It's not coming up, but... And I don't want to click on these because they may shut down the system. Uh, these are kind of like instant buttons. Uh, I know these, you know, are instant buttons as well. I just couldn't remember what the name of them was, but yeah, or what they actually represent. But that's actually restart. That's the power button. And then what's the other one? Let's see. Log out. So that's the log out uh, button right there. Now, let's go into the settings because uh, I want to show you guys the actual system settings. Uh, so let's go down and open that up right fast. Shouldn't take too long to open up and cool cool so there we go that's the settings you can go in and actually change everything pretty much everything about your settings in here uh you got your account details so you can go in and look at your account online accounts uh plasma tweaks 
uh, and this will allow you to make changes to plasma if you want to as far as themes go uh, so you have look and feel you got desktop themes you can actually change it up which is super cool you know what i'm saying i always like the dark themes you got your desktop effects which you can go through and, and modify it through here uh, you can turn things on turn things off uh, widget style so you can change the styles of the widgets uh, window decorations and splash screen so that's you know the login screen and let's hit this discord right there but um but you can change it up you know make it look high if you want to you know curse cursor theme uh colors icons and gnome application gtk uh styles so i'm gonna go into that uh but then you have your workspace behavior user management daytime font settings you can go in and add fonts you know uh, modify what you got uh, shortcut shortcuts you know stored up shut down uh, so you can have applications stored up uh, as soon as you log into the system uh, display settings so you can go in here and modify that um, audio network settings input input devices printers uh, Bluetooth power management uh, KDE connect that allows you to connect phones uh, removable storage uh, other and about the system we'll click on about the system and it's basically what that was what we clicked up earlier but that's pretty much all the settings right there um, now let me go down and show you guys the package manager which I kind of skipped over and it's under system so if we go to synaptic package manager we can open that up you know you gotta type in your username or your password i'm sorry so you can open it up because this requires you to change things on the change things on the system or you can change things about the system by installing applications you have to use you know your pseudo password but you can go through find whatever applications you want and you can search you know install and all that good stuff from under here uh, using this synaptic package manager so let's go down and close that I'm, I'm i'm not gonna go through it i'm not gonna really go through and show you guys how to do it there's plenty of documentation on how to actually use the synaptic package manager but check it out for yourself and then under here under system they had the update manager i want to open up as well this will allow you to check your system via a gui versus running sudo apt update you can you know check for updates from here uh just type uh hit refresh it'll refresh the repositories you know see if there are any updates and then you can install those updates from this actual application and as you can see this system is up to date since i ran all the updates a little earlier but that's pretty much all I want to show you guys on this actual distribution. It's a great distribution for you to check out, especially if you like KDE. I recommend you check it out, you know, for yourself. Uh, this is a great, you know, this is a great looking desktop environment. Uh, the way they have it customized and the way they have it looked uh, looking. So I hope you guys check it out for yourself. You know what I'm saying? In virtual box. So you can see if you want to install this on your as your main driver for your system. Because it looks like a great distribution. Especially with it having the Debian stable, stable as the base. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave comments down in the comment boxes below. And of course, keep it techie.